Thank you for coming to our presentation. My name is Chen Xinyan Yilis Shen. I'm a master student at University of British Columbia. Today, I will present an embodied VR system called LexiSphere, which aims to improve intergenerational communication between family members. The research was conducted under supervision of Professor Joanna McGranny and Professor Dong Kyung at University of British Columbia. When younger adults talk to older adults, the stereotype of cultural norms they believe in can prevent them from having an open or honest conversation. Intergenerational communication can be defined broadly as the interaction between two distinct generations. The term generation can be considered based on the role relationships such as aging parent and adult children. Talking across generations can make family closer and happier. However, the individual from one generation often holds stereotypes about those from another generation, making it challenging for them to emphasize what's the situation for the perspective of the other. One of the greatest demographic challenges the world is facing today is the aging population. Between the year 2000 and 2050, the expected proportion of the population aged 80 years and older will expand significantly, approaching nearly 5%. So increasing intergenerational communication in an aging society can enhance the mutual understanding and foster a more cohesive community. Our objective is to improve the quality of communication by fostering empathy and understanding between older and younger adults. We choose to use VR technique because the VR perspective taking allows users to experience another person's viewpoint directly by embodying that person's avatar, which gives a first-hand understanding of the other's experiences. Our VR setup also motivated by a theory called Proteus Effect. This theory suggests that individuals can change their behavior and perspective based on how they are represented digitally. The identity cues present in a user's avatar can lead to changes in behavior and attitude, along with promote empathy toward their identity. So one uh, important example about how previous effect and virtual reality can be used effectively involves allowing individuals who are not black to experience life through the perspective of black individual avatars. So this immersive experience has been proved to significantly decrease racial bias against black people by fostering empathy and understanding through the vi virtual embodiment. So there are another studies shows that one's social strategy and self-perception may change due to the attractiveness of their avatar. Uh, so we are looking into the following research questions. The first one is, how can we design a VR setup that fosters improved communication between older adults and young adults, leading to increased empathy between them? Additionally, we seek to identify the key elements uh, should such a VR setup include and how does it affect them individually and their interactions. So our solution approach is developing a VR space where the younger adult can take the perspective of the older adult and force the conversation based on the older adult's past experiences. The design goal is to enhance empathy and understanding between the older generation and the younger generation. Our design approach is primarily focused on fostering empathy in younger adults toward the older adult, as a key issue in intergenerational communication often caused by the negative perception and attitude of younger adults toward the older ones. So the figure provides an overview of our legacy VR system. On the left side is the VR environment, which is mapped to the physical space shown at the right side. The older adult and the younger adult are sitting next to each other, embodied in design avatars. So I will elaborate more on the avatar design in the following sections. We use perspective taking as our solution approach. The younger adult will use the avatar that look like the older adult at various ages, helping them to think from the older adult's point of view. So, and the older adult will share stories about the important events in their life with the younger adult. Then the younger adult will reflect on these life events, pretending to be the older adult they are representing. Uh, the design space of Legacy Sphere ever configuration, there are many alternatives. Through so, uh, design exploration, which is detailed in the paper, we have identified the two most promising configurations. So the first one is past meets future, and the second one is called all the adults in the monologue. Uh, so we will start by talking about the first scenario, the past meets future scenario. So here, uh, the younger adult is placed in the body of all the adults during their youth. And the older adult will use the avatar that look like themselves at present. 
The scenario is called past means future because the past older adult will talk to the current older adult. So the design purpose is to encourage younger adults to get through the age stereotype and understanding that the older adult may also be naive when they were young. So this may enable younger adults to connect with the universal human emotions and dilemma that exist across all generations and foster empathy toward older adults. Uh, the second scenario is called older adults in the monologue. So the older adult and the younger adult will use the same avatar that look like older adult at present. So the scenario is called older adults in the monologue because it's like letting the older adult talk to someone in the mirror. Uh, the older adult will treat younger adult as their inner self, and in this scenario, young adult will try to imagine what the older adult might think and feel nowadays. The experience may counter the assumptions the younger adults may have about the daily life of older adults. So all two dimensions of each avatar are identity and age. The participants can choose to use their own body or someone else in a virtual environment. The avatar can represent the older adults as they appear now as they did in their youth. Previous research has shown that experiencing the world through the eye of an older person in virtual reality can greatly lessen age-related stereotypes among young people. Each of the two scenarios above contains three elements, avatar embodiment, storytelling, and role play. So we have talked about the avatar embodiment, here we'll look into the storytelling. The older adults are invited to tell the younger adult about important events from their past in each scenario. These stories are deeply meaningful to them and have played a big part in shaping who they are and how they see the world. So younger adults will post reflective questions on the older adult story, such as, why I made such decision? Please pay attention that the younger adult use first-person pronunciation at this place, since younger adults are playing the role of older adult talking to another self. Reflective questioning is a clinical technique used to encourage practitioners to promote greater understanding and empathy toward their patients. Another design element is role play, which aims to help participants adopt their new identities in virtual reality more effectively. We implement role playing guidelines, which include instructions that let the younger adult pretend to be the older adults they are representing, and the older adults will try to treat younger adults as themselves. The role playing guidelines are designed based on the understanding that empathy is a skill can be developed through training and practice. So during the entire study, the core task is having each die experience two representative scenarios mentioned above in the VN setup. The study was composed of three key phases. First, an online pre-study interview was conducted with the older adult to set up the storytelling process. Next, an in-person VN session was held, during which the younger adult and older adult were guided to use legacy of fear and experience the perspective-taking scenarios. The introductory scenario was always going first as it helped participants to get familiar with the VI environment and the study structure. The second and the third scenarios, all the adults in the monologue and past means future will experience in a randomized order. In each scenario, all the adults will tell two stories about their past experiences to younger adults, and the younger adult will ask a few reflective questions, which starts a conversation with the older adult. Finally, a post-interview was conducted to gather feedback and reflections on their experiences. It took roughly two hours to finish the entire study in total. So our study involved five parent-children diets, each with a generational gap. The parents are mostly in their 50s and most of the children are in their 20s. We used thematic analysis to analyze interview recordings. The video recordings serve as supplementary data. The thematic analysis employs a combination of induction and deduction coding strategies, with all three researchers engaged in the coding process. The major takeaway from the analysis was that the alternative embodiment can enhance younger adults' understanding of older adults. By getting rid of the parent-children identities, a transfer open environment for communication was fostered. Such communication eventually can lead to a co-created new perspective on older adults' past experiences. The first finding I want to present is that how the young adult engage in perspective taking. Several young adult participants mentioned that they use a way of blending their real self and embodied self. To be more specific, they attempt to adapt the identity of their embodied self while drawing from the knowledge and experiences from their real self. So this may sound confusing, so I will make an example. In the past means future scenario, younger adults draw from their understanding of different social norms between the present and the past. As mentioned by young adult 5, when she attempted to portray the role of her mother, uh, she incorporated her understanding of how women were treated in the country where her mother grew up in back to those days, 
stating, If I try to relate to myself nowadays, it wouldn't apply right because a lot of things are different, like the social pressure of doing a solo trip. But back to then, it was a big deal. Lex is a fearful state of unique communication dynamics, which are a safe place for participants to more freely express their deep emotions and fear feelings. In reality, the parent-children identities can sometimes create limitations in communication, such as feeling, feeling limited by the role they play in the family. So by stepping away from the real-life roles as parents and children, the avatar embodiment fosters a trustful, open environment for communications between the older adult and young adult. It encourages something we term relationship cushioning. Some older adults express that they feel more comfortable sharing their hidden feelings during the alternative embodiment, as they believe they wouldn't face any judgment from the other self. As mentioned by older adults Ray, in VR, I feel like I should honestly answer, because there wasn't gonna be any judgment, and there wasn't gonna be any judgment from my younger self. With the experiences of legacy sphere, the older adult and younger adult eventually reach a co-creating new perspective on older adult's past experiences. By allowing the younger adult to retain part of their real selves while embodying the role of older adult, unique viewpoints were brought into the interactions. For example, younger adult four become more sensitive to their similarities with the older adult. From appearances to personality, which encourage her to compare her personal development plan with the older adult's past experiences. For example, younger adult four become more sensitive to her similarities with her mother, from appearances to personality, which encourage her to compare her personal development plan with her mother's past experiences. Talking to another self allowed the older adult to reveal their past life experiences and the decisions they made. These diverse perspectives and input that younger adults offer stimulated self-reflection and personal growth among the older adults. So our findings contribute additional evidence to support the existence of the Proteus effect and illustrate their potential advantages in enhancing intergenerational communication. We made the following design recommendations. First, we advise against solely aiming for a perfectly immersed embodiment through high fidelity avatar implementation. An imperfect avatar offers a unique vantage point, creating a space where participants can comfortably explore new conversation topics and bonded by the limitation of real life relationships. Second, we recommend the researchers involve design elements which lead to a co created perspective on the audience's past experiences such as considering striking a balance between encouraging participants to immerse themselves into a role and allowing them to retain part of their real self. Finally, we suggest that designers enhance experience by utilizing multiple avatars in a chronological narrative approach. The young adults can adopt different avatars representing the older adults at various life stages, arranging in a chronological order. This may deepen the young adults' understanding of the older adults' life journeys. This work was supported by the Discovery Grant Program of Natural Science and Engineering Research Council in Canada. Additional support was provided by Designing of People at University of British Columbia, along with a generous gift from Adobe Research. So here are our core contributions. First, we present Lexi Sophia, a VR experience that employs perspective taking to facilitate intergenerational communication and enhance empathy toward other family members. We also offer a detailed insight into the impact of our design elements, including avatar embodiment setups, storytelling procedures, and role-playing activities. So in the end, I want to thank everyone who made this project possible, especially my advisors Joanna and Donwok. I would like to also extend my thanks to everyone at Max for providing valuable feedbacks and supporting me on this project. Thank you for watching my presentation.